So I had some questions on my 1940s capsule wardrobe video about where do I get my vintage clothes from. And so I thought I would make a follow-up video just to let you guys know. So if you're looking to build a capsule wardrobe. So first I'm going to start off saying that I actually make most of my own clothes. Um, and the main reason for this is I have a very curvy figure, particularly in my lower half. I have very large hips compared to my waist size. So it's very difficult for me to find bottoms and dresses that are going to fit both my waist and my hips. So that's one of the reasons that I do make a lot of my own clothes. Um, and so I use a lot of um, vintage patterns. So this, this is the um, one that I use to make the jacket for my suit. Um, that I paired with a red skirt that I already had from a different pattern. And um, I get these, most of these on Etsy or eBay for the actual vintage sewing patterns. And then I can perfectly tailor it to fit my shape. Um, but I did want to share with you um, one company that I've had experience with that makes awesome uh, 1940s pieces. And that is Wearing History Clothing. So the blouse that I'm wearing today, this is their Norma Jean blouse. It's got a cute little collar and these kimono sleeves and it's kind of fitted at the waist but a little bit blousey around the top so it's super comfortable and you have huge range of motion and you can do things in it um, which is great because we actually have to live in our clothes. Um, and so this is... Their Norma Jean blouse. I also have one of their other blouses, which you guys saw in the um, 40s capsule wardrobe, and that is the Ruthie blouse. And that's this one. It's in a little polka dot chambray, which is super cute. Okay, it's a very um, quiet polka dot, so it can actually read more like a solid, so you could pair it with another print, but it gives it just that little something extra so that it's a little bit more interesting than say just a plain blue shirt. Um, but this shirt has again a cute little collar, a little 40s sleeve. It's a little bit gathered at the top but it's not like hugely poofy. Um, and I've got these great little buttons on here. Okay, So these are the two pieces that I have from the Wearing History clothing line. Um, also in the line there are two dresses, one that features the same polka dot chambray, one that features, um, part of the dress in this really cute music print, and also, uh, 1940s trousers, the nice high-waisted long-legged, wait, high-waisted wide-legged trousers. Um, so those are all really great wardrobe building pieces if you're looking for um, clothing for that. And this is a, um, a newer company that um, started not too long ago and I was super happy to be able to participate in the uh, Kickstarter um, for this company so that they could come out with their very first line and I'm really excited to see what sort of other things that they come up with. Um, I actually wear that blue Ruthie blouse a lot, a lot, a lot. It is super comfortable and again it has really great range of motion. Uh, that's one of the things that I don't always like about sewing with vintage patterns is sometimes the sleeves fit kind of wonky and you can't really like lift your arms up that high and do things in them. Um, so they're really great. They'd be perfect for, um, let's say, a swing dance event where you have to be having your hand and the swirling and the twirling and all that kind of stuff. Um, but they are super great. I have not tried any of the dresses or the pants. Again, because of my shape, I would not fit, especially in the 40s sizing. I can't um, buy anything off the rack that's 1940s because there's not going to be enough space for my hips. Um, but that's... Uh, a really great company to purchase from and in addition to the clothing line they also have a pattern line which has been around for a lot longer and I do sew a lot from their um, patterns and I brought a couple to show you guys they offer a more wider variety of styles in the patterns including 
um, historical patterns, um, 1930s patterns, and also many 1940s. So one of the ones I've sewn up a lot is the home front overalls. These are one World War II style overalls for ladies. They're super cute because, and they are shaped for a woman, which is awesome because there's nothing worse than an article of clothing that makes you feel fat in the middle. Mm, we don't like it. Um, and this also includes options for pants, shorts, and also a little like romper, which is super cute. And this is another one that I've made up before. This is the 1940s Sailor Play Suit, which comes with um, a blouse pattern, a skirt pattern, and also a shorts pattern, okay? Um, particularly the skirt and the shorts, you could make these up in like three or four different colors and just wear that as your entire wardrobe all the time with different tops. And re one I just got recently just came out with this really cute like 40s bathing suit slash play suit pattern and um, since I have moved to Florida I've been all about the beach wear. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to try and make a version to swim in or not because at this point in time swimwear is very different from modern swimwear. Um, they weren't made out of these kind of super stretchy elastic swimwear fabrics that we're used to so I'll have to kind of play around with it, this and see but it also has a really cute option to make a little romper play suit. Um, so that is my video. Um, so I don't um, purchase a lot of ready to wear and also because of my shape being uh, not exactly ideal for the 1940s. I don't have as big of a collection of 1940s ready to wear as I do say 1950s ready to wear. Um, so I think if you guys would like to, I can also make a video highlighting some of the, the ready to wear companies that I love that make more 1950s styles. So definitely let me know in the comments if that's something that you would like to see. And thank you guys for watching.